So you can chalk it up as a case of the game twos for the Celtics because in game three relatively dominant led by Jason Tatum. They take the 2-1 series lead over Cleveland. Tatum here near the two minute mark puts his team up 15 a 33 point performance 13 rebounds to go with it as the Celtics draw ahead. CBS Sports NBA insider Bill Ryder here with his thoughts. Uh, Bill, we're going to pull back the curtain here. We just did we just did the full segment uh, off camera. But <laughs> I, I want to go where we started that conversation because my eyes, I'm looking at this box score, looking for offensive answers for the Celtics. You say, no, no, Joe. Look at the defensive end of the floor here in game three. Yeah, look, the Celtics can beat you both ways. And at least on paper and in practice so far in the postseason, they've been extraordinary. Sometimes we look past how good this team is defensively. And I thought, Joe, in, in this game, they made life so miserable for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, it's also a good matchup for that. The Cavs were 18th in offense over the course of the regular season. This is a Boston team that had the third best defense in the NBA. We overlooked that because they had the best offense. But I thought on this night, they just made life miserable for almost every player not named Donovan Mitchell. And even Donovan Mitchell, who, again, was really good, ran on his team in that fourth quarter. Every bucket he got, they made him work for. Evan Mobley was fine. There's just not enough, not enough offense from this Cavs mm -hmm. team. And credit the Celtics squad. Their defense is extraordinary. It is a quiet part of their dominance this season. And it's going to be, if they make the deep run, most of us expect one of the primary ingredients behind whatever they accomplish this uh, this playoffs. Well, the, the flaw in this whole postseason thing is we can only measure you across from the team you're looking in the eye right now is this a Celtics team that needs to be tested they sort of put this game two thing out in front of themselves each series but in terms of their relative competition we're talking about the offensive woes of Cleveland are they going to have seen enough heading into an Eastern Conference final and then an NBA final to feel good about who the Celtics are on both ends of the court it's a great question I don't know if they'll if they'll if they've seen enough I, I know I haven't mm -hmm. like I am not as convinced as everybody else that Boston is a sure thing, Joe, just because you're right. I, I don't know. Playing the Miami Heat without Jimmy Butler, not a huge challenge. And I don't want to be disrespectful to the team that's from my wife's home state, but this Cleveland Cavaliers <laughs> team isn't very good. They're just so here's their big calling card, right? To your point, Cleveland's main thing is here is man, they are so good defensively. They were six in defensive rating. You've got a Boston team that's markedly better. And then the goalkeeper, we have they have Donovan Mitchell, and he can go out, he can create his own shot, he'll get buckets. Well, he's gotten buckets in this series. The problem is the Celtics have multiple guys who can do it. I mean, if you took Chris South Porzingis and you took him off the Cleveland Cavaliers team for this round, which is the case for Boston, they'd be missing probably their second best player. For for the Celtics, it's not a big deal. So it's yes, that they have not been tested in the teams that they've played. Now you earn that when you're the one seed. And we've talked a lot about this, and I think it's worth noting. They also have not been very good this year in close games. They just they just haven't. Their numbers drop really, really uh, markedly when you look at close games, last five minutes, three points or closer. The thing is, nobody in this postseason so far has played them that, that close. Maybe that'll happen later in this series. I doubt it. Maybe it'll happen in the Eastern Conference Finals. We'll see. Probably happens in the Finals. But yes, I don't think that they are particularly tested. And I do think that there's a world, and I don't know the answer yet, where because they haven't been tested and because in close games in the regular season, they didn't perform very well, that if somebody can actually challenge them, Joe, at the end of games, punch them in the nose a little bit, make it hard, do what the Knicks have done all postseason, play close game after close game, there might be a world where there's some vulnerabilities to the Celtics team that on paper looks unbeatable. Well, I want to go to a chin check in a different series, one we saw earlier on in the night. OK's youth, OKC, excuse me, their youth, it's now tested in a way it has not been this postseason, now playing the role of chaser down to one as the Mavericks do gain back a bit of momentum here with their game three win. How do you think they respond to the current series split here at two one all of that youth on their side playing a banged up Mavs team. Yes, but in between the ears what that means. It's a great question too. Look, I, I don't want to rule out the thunder because anything can happen. I remember arguing with my colleagues on the podcast that just because Denver was down 2-0 didn't mean that that series was over. These are long series and if you're at 2-1 Right? Things can change very, very quickly. But you're right. The Thunder's youth has been an issue. And I think that was the advantage we saw earlier today against Dallas because this is a Mavericks team that we know has two guys who can go out and get themselves buckets and take over games over the course of a game or really late in the fourth quarter, late in the game. And Kyrie Irving, who did it in this game, and Luka Doncic, who obviously can do it. The thing about Dallas is they've been the best defense in the NBA going back to March 7th. It's not the whole season, but it's an interesting sample size. There's some new guys that came in. 
at the trade deadline. So you take in the fact that they can get buckets, that you've got Kyrie Irving, who's not just a former champion, but hit that shot against the Warriors all those years ago, that three-point shot in the finals. That they basically won that game and won that championship. And the fact they play defense now, and you're right, you're going to test the Thunder. They're going to have to find guys who can create offense outside of SGA. They don't really have anyone who can do that. And you did see that youth, I thought, in, in this game today, really struggle. And whether they can respond in a game four, whether they can sort of get back on where they need to be on track as the one seed, I think it's a very open question because some young teams sometimes do well, Joe, but in the history of the league, every executive, every coach will tell you if you're young and you're unproven and you don't have a lot of playoff experience, that will catch up to you no matter how good you've been in the regular season. And that fits to a T, this Thunder team so far. Our postseason cup runneth over as we take a look at what Sunday has in store. Knicks Pacers at 3.30 Eastern time will add another chapter to that bitter rivalry between the two. We will see if the Knicks can again withstand some of the omissions on their side. And then it's Nuggets Timberwolves with the defending champs back to life looking to draw 2-2 and protect away court. Bill Ryder back in the mix to explore. And let's start with the Knicks and the Pacers. So much between these two and between the whistles, frankly, as well. But I want to go back to what you saw in the previous game. OG Ananobi not there, not expected to be on Sunday either, still dealing with that leg issue. How glaring of an omission was that in your eyes, and what is the adjustment here for game four? It is incredibly significant. It, it, this is a this is a player in Ananobi since he got traded earlier in the season. When, when he's been on the floor, this Knicks team has had the best record in the NBA over the course of OG Ananobi's games. It, it is, look, he, he's not LeBron James in LeBron's prime. He, he's not Nikola Jokic, but for whatever reason, that is the level of impact he has on this Knicks team. His, his defense as a secondary scorer, it is a huge, huge loss. And I think the problem with this Pacers team, Joe, is that you take Ananobi out, they get some confidence. They were also a little better defensively toward the end of the regular season. Halliburton started to get going a little bit and then all of a sudden the next the, the solution the, the adjustment it's not an easy answer they are banged up it feels like everybody is injured and, and hurt and you also have let's be fair and Tom Thibodeau a great coach who piles the minutes up he does it in the regular season he does it in the playoffs and so all of a sudden the wear and tear on the guys that are out there is probably going to be a factor against a Pacers team that plays at this frenetic pace they like to get up and down they wear you out that is hard enough if you have a complete assortment of the players that you want on a Tibbs team who have played two minutes and are worn out. They're obviously shorthanded. They're missing a bunch of guys, not just Ananobi, who's critically important. It is a huge opportunity for the Pacers, I think, to take advantage of a stylistic difference between the two teams and the fact that the guys who might be able to counteract what Indiana does so well aren't going to be out there. That's so telling was Josh Hart's answer after game two of what changes without OG on the court for you specifically. He goes, man, I'm playing 43 either way, and the way he said it almost <laughs> resigned to the will of his head coach. We'll see if that is a, a winning formula here on Sunday. Defending champs, as we said, back off the mat. Looking to keep the away sides alive in this series. How do you explain the ceiling and floor we've seen from the Nuggets over the last week, and where do you think they fall on that gamut Sunday? Yeah, what an interesting series this has been. Look, this is a this is a Denver team that if they had a weakness over the last year or so, it would be the fact that they just get a little careless and lackadaisical. But Joe, it didn't matter. It's like the it's like the mighty Casey only not striking out. They won an NBA championship last year. They were great in the regular season. They they probably should have been the top seed, and they kind of gave that away a little bit at the end in the final game of the season. But right, it felt like it wasn't going to matter. Then they ran into this Timberwolves team who played the best defense of any team in the NBA, and Anthony Edwards, who's amazing. His stardom, right? His 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 shine. It just got the brightest that we've seen it. And there's this notion out there that he could be one of the faces of the league going forward. And it looked like they were in dire straits. And and what do they do? At least in Game Three, they do what they always do. They flip that switch. They don't just win on the road. They they dominate. So I I still think that that ceiling for Denver is obviously a championship. And the question is, have they figured out that the floor that they have is self-inflicted? And if they start, you know, competing Joe in the first quarter and the second quarter, maybe that'll help. I, I think that is the case. I imagine they're going to stop playing around and messing around. And I think, like a lot of people around the NBA, whoever wins that game four is probably going to win the series. And I think the Denver Nuggets probably know it, too. You're really good. Why not choose to be great? We will see if greatness rears its head again on Sunday. Bill Ryder, great as always. And don't forget, there is more Bill Ryder to be had. Our team, Ashley Nicole Moss, Bill Ryder, John Gonzalez, chopping it up on the hardwood and better time to get involved than right now. It's Beyond the Arc, anywhere you get your podcasts.
More coming on HQ. We got full highlights from Believe Land where a shadow of doubt shed here by the Boston Celtics in game three. We show you it all next.